Good morning. I'm Buddy Gaither, chairman of the North Carolina Dairy Security Committee. Uh, also, I work for Milko in Asheville, North Carolina. On behalf of the North Carolina Dairy Security Committee, I'd like to welcome you to our training session this morning, and I want to thank you in particular for your attendance. As our milk producers, you are the key to the success of our industry. We're facing large threats to our well-being and the possible uh, uh, instance of foot and mouth disease. The session today is going to show you ways that you can play a part in allowing portions of our business of our industry to stay in business if such a, a sad event occurs. We appreciate your being here and as we progress through the morning you'll be getting a lot of other information. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Jimmy Tickle. Uh, Jimmy is a veterinarian in, in charge with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture's emergency management section. And Jimmy has been a tremendous help to both our committee as we work through the years on our uh, business uh, con continuation plan. And also he is well known and well respected throughout the United States. He is in demand for meetings all over the country which relate to animal disease and business continuity. So we're happy to present to you Dr. Jimmy Tickle. It's great to be with you this morning and, and uh, what we're doing is, is trying to do a training uh, that will alert uh, farmers to the need for biosecurity, uh, dairy producers, uh, in the event of a foot mouth outbreak. My name is Dr. Jimmy Tickle. I'm a veterinarian with emergency programs. I've been working with the Dairy Biosecurity Committee for a number of years, really since 2002. We've done some good work. It's a great committee. We've put together a PowerPoint that we're going to go through that shares a lot of the information that we feel is important to help secure the dairy industry if an outbreak of foot and mouth disease were to occur and threaten our nation. That outbreak could be in a, another country or it could actually be in the U.S. So uh, as we move through the PowerPoint, uh, you'll see a number of different slides that, that talk about North Carolina, some of them talk about the nation, but most of all we're going to focus on how to biosecure your farm. So I'm glad to have you here. This is very important and a wonderful way to, to really put us on the same page uh, to, of how to respond to a, a pretty horrific event. Um, our first slide is, is uh, today, we're, we're in a quiet time. Uh, we don't have disease known as foot and mouth disease in the U.S., uh, but what we want to do is prepare on a quiet day so when a, a more disastrous day arrives, we, we are ready to act. This process has stages in it. Uh, Stages build upon each other, and uh, the stage, again, that we're talking about today is biosecurity. Uh, there's other stages. The next one would be proof of status testing, or the ability to test that a form uh, might would be uh, positive or negative. Uh, in those situations, it's important for officials to know where we are with regard to status of disease on a farm and then also in an area. So testing is important. Uh, another stage that we could talk about with regard to being prepared to respond to something like a foot and mouth would be vaccination. I'm here to go ahead and just tell you today we're furthest along on our biosecurity piece. It's common sense and a lot of the things that we should be doing today, some of the things we would definitely do during a, a heightened uh, threatened state. Uh, and, but a lot of the biosecurity principles, they're common sense, folks. So we're going to talk about that and focus on it. The proof of status and the vaccination we'll discuss a bit. USDA, state governments are still working on the best ways to handle these. There are some, some problems or some, some hurdles that we have to jump to get those into place. We'll do other training modules on those as soon as we get them to where it's to the point that bringing them to the farm would be the appropriate thing to do. Okay, uh, our committee is composed of a number of different industry representatives. You can see that we've got uh, the dairy industry, we've got extension, we've got Diener, we've got Department of Ag. Uh, the committee um, uh, has a, a good collection 
of the people that deal with the dairy industry or the people who are in the industry. The committee's done a, a lot of good work. The things that it has done is since uh, really forming as a part of the food defense and safety uh, task force has been to work on foot and mouth disease preparedness. Uh, the reason is, is foot and mouth disease is one of the larger challenges with regard to disease that we face. And some of the activities, you can see that it's been everything from, for example, a notification system. What that notification would do is how to put everybody on page as to what's happening quickly, effectively. Same message going to everybody that needs it. Uh, all the, you see that, so that's kind of an internal response piece, all the way to holding workshops to where we've done them both regionally and nationally, had other states and federal officials participate in them, as well as even being on the ground and doing some of the things that you'll see us recommend with regard to, to power washers and disinfectants and such, so that we've been all the way from the group that's meeting through the industry right down to the farm, okay? So a lot of good work. Appreciate, uh, I know the Department of Agriculture appreciates everything the dairy industry's done to prepare itself. Foot and mouth disease as a threat uh, is real. Uh, you'll see some mapping slides in just a minute. But uh, the reason it is such a threat is it is extremely contagious. That means it can go easily from animal to animal. Uh, if an outbreak occurs, the first thing that'll happen is restrictions stop movements and that's because disease can so easily be spread from point A to B and unfortunately when we start to stop movements uh, we affect the way that we can make a living and the way that the industry works so what we've actually tried to do is, is work this biosecurity uh, training piece and some of the other issues that we're dealing with to, to relax or to benefit ourselves in releasing those restrictions in the appropriate time frame so that we can get back to doing what we do best and that's milk cows and produce wholesome milk. Farmers, if they don't practice biosecurity, uh, it's the foundation. If you notice in our pyramid, it was the bottom. It holds up and supports everything else that we'll do and if we can't keep virus from coming on the farms, there's no vaccine, there's no treatment, and there's no test that's going to help us. Dairy farmers, we can't uh, afford to have uh, milk dumped for long. Your profit margins are not that great, so it's incredibly important to push this milk movement piece and business continuity forward. And so that's the reason that we've developed the plan. UK is a good learning point for us. And, uh, and then in England's outbreak, the things that they found were there were an incredible number of animals were euthanized. But of that eight million total, what was seen was that half of them were euthanized for animal welfare reasons. Animal welfare reasons are not animals that became infected or that were exposed. I, everybody thought they would break. Instead, these were negative animals. These were animals that uh, in my mind should not have been euthanized, but because of the situation that the response found themselves in and the officials found themselves in, they had to be, and that's because they couldn't get feed to them. Market value had dropped so low that they couldn't even uh, market the animals or the products, or that uh, crowding or husbandry issues brought it to the point to where animals had to be euthanized. And it's really because uh, the plans weren't good enough and the preparation were, were, uh, efforts were not good enough. That's what we're trying to do here is better our positions. It is a serious thing. The outbreak lasted a long time and you can see by the statistics that folks, 60 people committed that we know of and can attribute to uh, the outbreak. 60 folks committed suicides. So, uh, or suicide. It, it's, it's an incredibly emotional piece and when it starts to affect the way you do a living and that is your livelihood, it, it uh, brings some dire consequences. So we want to do this thing right, effective, efficient, and pre-planning and pre-action is the way to do that.